Hey everybody, Carla Hall here. I am super excited because we're all doing our best. And from what I can see out there on social media, you're all doing a pretty darn good job. And from the conversations that I've had with some of you, you seem to be surprising yourselves. <laughs> I know I'm surprising myself. Y'all know I'm throwing everything in the, in the um, air fryer. But even people who are passionate about food, we need a break from cooking every single meal. And my secret is to have a day or two during the week when I know that lunch or dinner is going to be an easy lift. I'm calling it some self-care because I'm going to use food for my chef friends over at Cuisine Solutions. These are the three things that we're gonna to make today. A roasted red pepper soup with garlic polenta croutons and the polenta's already done. Then we're gonna make a salad using the grilled chicken breast. I'm gonna show you how to make a tarragon dressing to go in that salad. And then I'm gonna do a pork belly. Ah! Oh! I love me some pork belly. Rarely make it at home, but we're gonna have that with a mango and tomato salad. Ah! <laughs> and the reason I'm so excited about the team over at Cuisine Solutions is because their food is that delicious. Their specialty is cooking food using the sous vide method. Yeah, you all have heard me talk about it. You've heard about it on a lot of the cooking shows, and it's the method of vacuum sealing food in a bag and cooking it in a water bath at a precise temperature without getting into all the details, and that flavor gets locked in. Y'all know I talk about there's flavor in the brown where there's flavor in sous vide. <laughs> <laughs> and these chefs make it possible to bring restaurant quality food into your freezer and all we have to do is heat it up in our ovens or in the microwave or drop that little bag in a pot of boiling water. It's that easy, I am just so ashamed to say, and it's delicious. Plus, and y'all know I like a deal, they're giving us all 50% off orders right now. Just enter the code CARLA. All right, so you can check it out. So let's get started with some easy everyday meals. Oh. So while that's heating, I'm gonna coarsely chop up my vegetables. I'm just going to slice my leeks. And I'm going to put them into this water that's room temperature, a little warmer than room temperature and then just sort of agitate them. And what happens is all of that sand drops to the bottom of the bowl. And you don't want cold water because the leeks will contract. So kind of warm-ish, room temperature, warm-ish. And, and that's it. it, and that's it. So when I get ready to use them, I'm just gonna lift them out of the water and then put them right in my pan. So they can stay just like that. I'm just going to rough chop this carrot. I really don't care what it looks like. It's one small carrot. Here's my trash bowl. You know those bags that you get in the produce section? I take one of those, I put it over a bowl, and then so all of my trash is here, and then I lift it out and I just throw it away. So a little tip for you. All right, so I have my carrots. I'm going to smash my garlic that's it that's all we're doing there and then i'm going to cut up my celery okay celery garlic what are these <laughs> all right we have celery garlic carrots i have a leek if you don't have a leek you can always use a white onion that is super simple this stuff is all going in to my pan Ooh, that's hot. I'm gonna turn that down a little bit. Okay. Just drain off my leeks. Don't worry about that. That's just the water hitting the oil. And then I have a sprig of thyme. If you don't have thyme, you can always use, if you don't have fresh thyme, you can always use um, dry thyme. That goes in there. A little bit of 
of salt, pepper. I like a little bit of chili flakes because I kind of like it spicy. Add a little bit more oil, only because fat is a flavor carrier. And so I'm going to add just a little bit of oil for the mouthfeel. This is going to be a puree soup. That's why it didn't matter how you were cutting the vegetables. I'm going to measure out a cup and a half of my roasted red peppers. I'm just going to pour it right from the bag. There we go. And then for the rest of this, you can use this for a sauce. You can use it for another day. You can like use it in a chicken where you sear the chicken and pour this in the pan and all of this roasted red pepper goodness is going to get locked into the chicken. So this is good for a couple of meals. Don't be scared that it seems like a lot. Now I'm going to pour in my roasted red peppers. I'm pouring them over a spoon so it doesn't splatter. And we're going to let that simmer. Stir it, let it simmer, and that is it. We're going to pull it out of there. We're going to put it in the blender. We can honestly be eating in about 30 minutes. What? So here I have another one of their products. This is the garlic polenta cakes. And I'm just going to pop out two just for what I'm going to need for now. And then I'm going to put the others back in the freezer so they stay fresh. So I'm cutting these cakes into eight pieces. So can you imagine, so this little wedge is going to be fried and then put on top of our soup. So my air fryer is on 390, it's the highest setting. So you have to decide what works for yours. Now I have my wedges of the croutons in my bowl and I'm gonna toss them, oh sorry. And I'm gonna toss them in oil. I'm probably gonna put a little more than I would normally So I really do want them to brown nicely. A lot of times people take their soups off the stove too quickly and they haven't developed the flavor. As soon as the carrots get soft, I will, I will take it off and they are still not soft yet. Add more stock if you think it needs more stock. You could also add water because there's plenty of flavor in these roasted red peppers. So now I'm going to let this simmer. I set it on four minutes. Again, it depends on your air fryer. All right, so here they are. Those are my croutons in the air fryer. They look great. Look at that. They look fantastic. Oh, they look so good. Okay, and while it's in the blender, I'm gonna add just a little bit of cream. I'm gonna reheat this as well. So a little, like two tablespoons of cream, not a whole lot. And because this is hot, I've gotta take the lid off because the steam needs to escape. So that means when, I, when I'm blending it, when I'm blending this, I'm gonna pulse it. Okay, so it's on low. I'm pulsing. And by the way, this can be a sauce with chicken or fish. And remember the octopus that we did? That would be delicious. Okay, so we have this. I'm going to put the croutons on top. You just have this with a little bit of salad and you are looking so good. Okay. This is so delicious. <laughs> Matthew always says that he doesn't like soups 
But then when I make him soup, he's like, oh, I like that soup. I make soup all the time. And he loves them every time. Mmm. Okay. Mmm. I have to keep going. <laughs> all right. I promised you easy, and this next recipe is truly, truly easy. The heavy lifting has already been done. So this is a packet of the grilled chicken breasts by Cuisine Solutions. There are eight in here. They are about five ounces each. And so you can do anything with these. You can just heat them up. You can put them into chicken salad. You can make chicken salad with them. You can put them into soups. You can put them into wraps. Like whatever you do with chicken breasts, these are some really moist and delicious chicken breasts and really season them nicely. I am going to do herbs in them. And I want to share with you the one thing that you will see about my recipes. You know, I, I'm always talking about I love lemons. I love sour. But when you see me cook, I have a bunch of citrus, right? And here I have limes, oranges, and lemons. And then I also have a bunch of herbs. Because that's going to bring the freshness. You can always use dry herbs, but don't forget about the fresh herbs. And in order to save them, what you can do is, let's say you see your parsley going bad, you can chop it up, put it into olive oil, and then mix that, even in your food processor or a chopper. And then you have your oil, freeze it into ice cube trays, and then when you want something fresh, pull it out, and that will be your oil component. Or when you are storing the herbs, keep them in their little bundles and put them into a jar or a glass, water, and then cover the top with a wet paper towel and then change the water daily. Your herbs will last. I mean, because a lot of times you're like, oh my God, I'm paying so much for herbs. And also just use them in salads and things. So that's what we're going to do today. <sighs> okay. Off my herb pedestal. <laughs> so I'm going to make the dressing first. And I always make dressings in jars because I want to put them in the jar, shake them up, I make a little extra, and I put them in my fridge, and they're done. And that's another quick and easy tip so that you can have something that's already made and delicious and you know exactly what's in it. Okay? So I'm going to do about three tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. And then I'm doing a double of oil. So even if I, that's not exactly um, the right amount, I can absolutely see that I want my oil to be doubled, right? I want my oil to be doubled and I pour until it looks like it's doubled. Okay, that looks like it's doubled. It's just two to one, two parts oil to one part vinegar. Okay, now I'm going to add some mayonnaise, about a tablespoon full. I want a creamy dressing. This is a little cheat. Condiments are a the bomb diggity. And I'm gonna add about a teaspoon of vinegar because tarragon loves vinegar. I mean, what did I say? Tarragon, tarragon loves Dijon mustard. Okay, so I have that. And now I have a clove of garlic, which I'm going to use my microplane. You don't have to do that much, just a hint. And then I'm going to add in some tarragon. I'm using the dry tarragon, just like a quarter teaspoon. I also have some fresh tarragon, but that is going to be delicious. It smells so good. Salt. I want to add just a little bit of pepper. Shall I'll have to get things too. And now, just shake it up. It's a little creamy dressing. Let's see how that looks. All right, let's taste it. Look at that. It's And you can see the consistency. If you want it thicker, you can add more mayonnaise. Mm. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. As it sits, that tarragon is going to come through. But I think I want a little more tarragon. Yeah, that's not quite a half teaspoon, but I just wanted a little more tarragon. Make sure you use your taste buds. All right. So that's our dressing. I'm going to stick that aside. Now I'm going to take out the chicken breast. <laughs> I love this packaging because it just peels open so easily. I'm just going to take out one for the benefits of showing you, but take out as many as you want. These go back in the fridge, but not into the freezer. Once you thaw the chicken breast or any food that you've gotten, don't refreeze it. Just sort of plan out your meals to use it all. Or what you do is while it's frozen, break off a frozen chicken breast, keep the frozen ones in the freezer, and then you can thaw that one, okay? I'm gonna heat this up in the microwave. While that is heating up, I'm gonna cut my herbs. I have tarragon, I have parsley, and I have some cilantro. Make sure you use a sharp knife on the herbs. There's our chicken breast. Okay, so we have our herbs. Lightly brush the mustard on the chicken breast. Now what I'm gonna do, spread my herbs out. And I'm gonna press, ooh, it's hot. Look at that. Press the herbs into the chicken breast and that's that. All right, so my chicken breast is done, and as you can see, it's just these herbs and then rolled into the chicken breast with a little bit of Dijon mustard. You can add lemon zest to this, you can add orange zest, lime zest, they will all be delicious. And I'm thinking, wow, I'm thinking orange. Orange might be really, really good. So let me just add a little bit of, a little bit of orange to this now. That may taste really yummy. For my greens, I have some cabbage. I've got some cut and cleaned romaine leaves. I just took the leaves off. Okay. I'm gonna roll it up just like collards. There we go. So there's my lettuce. I like, I like cabbage. I like the texture of cabbage. So I want to put some cabbage in. Plus, I had cabbage in the fridge. So I didn't put it on the recipe. But whatever greens you have, whatever mixed greens, including cabbage. So I'm going to use my cutting board as my mixing bowl. Sometimes your time about doing dishes also has to be incorporated into fast. So here we go. I'm just going to drizzle some dressing just on the grains, as much or as little as you want. Whenever I'm making my dressing, I want it to taste a little vinegary. So if you like less of that, then put more oil in it or more mayonnaise, okay? Cheese if you want it. Our chicken breast. Oh, look at that. So fast, so easy. All you needed was the microwave, a little bit of cutting up of lettuce. If you have mixed greens, it's just opening a bag, grapes, cheese, 
Let's see how it tastes. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You don't have to wonder where I'm going. I have one more easy dish to show you, and this is with the pork belly. And I'm going to make a quick mango and tomato salad. And those of you who have my cookbook, Carla Hall Soul Food, in the cookbook, it's the peach and tomato salad. I just swapped out mangoes because I see mangoes in the stores and peaches aren't in season yet. So the mangoes are an equal swap and they'll be just as delicious. So mangoes, tomatoes, I have onions. Um, I said red onions, but I didn't have one, so a white onion herbs. I have two chilies. I have a serrano and a cubano. This one's mild and this one's a little bit spicy. And then the pork. And the pork I'm going to open right up, put it in my oven-proof dish, and the oven is at 375 and this goes in the oven for about 35 minutes. Oh, it smells amazing. So that pork just sits right in there like that. Ooh, do I need this juice? I'm gonna say yes. I'm gonna just, all this juice that's in there, I'm just gonna pour it out. I want everything that they've given me. So the pork in the oven, and that's the heavy lifting, and all of this stuff we just cut up. and now I'm going to cut on either side of the pit of the mango this is a golden mango so it is really flat you don't have as much flesh on the other side this is going to be my treat for later <laughs> now for the mangoes I just want to do uh, like a half moon we're almost there. Ha! Ah, I'm doing three right now. You'll probably only be doing one. So this prep is going to take you, um, like, active time, about 10 minutes. So I'm going to put my mangoes and my tomatoes into a bowl. And I'm going to sprinkle them with salt, about a quarter teaspoon. The salt is going to pull out all of this juice and really make them nice and juicy. Be so good. That's why you start this first. Oh my god. I could have gotten a bigger bowl. <laughs> I'm really hungry. Okay. Alright. So about five minutes. So again, I'm gonna do oil and vinegar. Not a real complicated vinaigrette. It's just oil and vinegar. This time I'm doing about equal parts. You all know that I love a good pucker, so I have lots of vinegars that I try. This one is more like a Sauvignon Blanc, so I thought a white Sauvignon Blanc with that pork and the mangoes and the tomatoes would be really delicious. I don't drink, but I do eat my alcohol. <laughs> okay. All right, and I'm going to add some salt to this and some pepper to my mangoes and tomatoes. I'm gonna to shake this up. Taste it really quickly, see if the ratios are good. Mm. So good. <laughs> it's so simple, it's so good. So let me cut up some more herbs. Here I have parsley. I have mint and I have dill and some chives. Whatever herbs you have, just make them part of the salad. I'm gonna rough chop these so they're not gonna be as fine as the herbs were for the chicken. I have some serrano peppers. I kinda want the heat, so I'm leaving the seeds in. If you don't like the heat, I mean, you can also use a a jalapeno too, but if you don't like the heat, then just do a mild pepper, it's okay. And then I have this Cubano. 
just cutting through the flesh here so that I can lift out the seeds just like that and set that. I happen to have the other half of this white onion from earlier, so I'm going to use this one. If you don't like onions or you can't eat onions, leave it out. You are the master of your universe. Except when it comes to all this, right? <laughs> Stand and all. Okay, so I'm gonna do really thin, thin, thin onions. All right, now we mix it all up together. We put the dressing on, and then we just wait for the pork. Now, this is when we talk about the size of my bowl. I should have had a bigger bowl, but honestly now, because I want this to be easy peasy and I don't want to have a lot of work, I really am too lazy to get a larger bowl. I mean, it is just right there, right there. I'm getting a bigger bowl. <laughs> Why was I fighting it? Okay. All right, this is so much better. Look at that, it's so pretty. And you don't need all of this to just pour in some, see what you need. Mm. I'm telling you, it's so easy. It's so unexpected and it's so delicious. Now we just have to wait on the pork. Um, this pork is also really good it's leftovers for sandwiches, for throwing it into soups. I threw it into a broth with vegetables, which is super, super delicious and easy. So even though it looks like a lot, and they're just two of us um, in the house, but look at that. I mean, it's like crunchy. Oh my God, I cannot, I cannot wait to cut into this. So I'm gonna let it rest for five to 10 minutes. Mm. Super excited. I love onions that have been sitting in like vinegar and oil. They're so great. They just wilt down and they're so beautiful and delicious. Okay. I am breathless with excitement, I have to tell you. <laughs> oh, sorry. Look at that. Look at that. What? Oh! Mm. Mm -mm -mm. I promised you fast and easy, and um, fast and easy you're getting. This is so beautiful. It is so beautiful. Okay. Honestly, one piece is all I need because this is rich. So look at this. What I love about this dish is that the salad of the tomatoes and the mango and the peppers and the vinegar, that cuts through the richness of the pork. So if you need more vinegar, lay it on there because it's going to be so delicious with with this pork. You taste it. Mmm. Mm. Mm. It's so delicious. All right. I hope you're inspired to not only give yourself a treat, but put some money back in your pocket by ordering 15% off, three easy dishes. You've got a soup, you've got a salad with chicken, you've got the pork belly with um, mangoes and tomatoes, and hopefully this will get you through and you'll have even more inspiration from these. Just put your own spin on things and just enjoy.